up everybody I am behind on my videos to you guys um, for those of you still interested in my story um, I'm behind because I've had a couple setbacks um, I had a lot of hard time breathing in the beginning and still now but um, it's getting better so, um, it's been hard to even talk, so I've just been really even limiting how much I talk. Um, so, this is supposed to all be normal. Uh, time will tell, but yeah, I definitely recommend having an incentive spirometer in which you inspire to help increase your tidal volume. So I posted a little video on my story of me doing it and mine started off really, really bad. Um, so that wasn't something that was mentioned to me before. I would definitely recommend it though. Honestly, I think just for after any type of surgery, um, it's super important to get those deep breaths, not let those lower lung fills, those alveoli in your lungs to shut down on you um, because it just makes your discomfort even worse and then it makes you anxious and panicky and in pain um, all together. So it was not a good couple days um, in that regard. The pain, um, is the worst or was the worst when washing my hands so like going across midline that's like my range of motion that I've really had to work that direction um, and it's coming along but it's slow overhead is still coming along but it's slow um yeah I'm just blessed and lucky that I know what I'm doing as a physical therapist I really don't see I don't see how um, these people that don't have a medical background or any kind of healthcare background go and get these things done successfully. It's it's not optimal. I mean, I really think that everyone should have physical therapy on the front end of these things. So post-op, it would definitely help. Um, I'm sure there's been cases where they do recommend it to people. It's just not something routine, but I think it should be routine seriously I mean so I'm actually I've started a book a guidebook uh, that'll be an ebook with videos on what to do how to rehab yourself back to your prior level so yeah I saw a gap for that it's much needed so um, that's what I'm gonna do so watch out for that but, um, yeah, I say also it's still just really hard. So I'm um, a week from surgery and it's still just the last couple nights I've been able to progress laying down more. Um, and, but it's always a bear to get up. Like, and a part of it is still, you think it's going to hurt, you know it's going to hurt. You're anticipating it to hurt, so you're not fully, you know, you're trying to, like, exert just enough strength and power to, like, not rip yourself open. And then you're trying to, you know, use momentum and use your counterbalance and, um, you know, it's still painful. But it's getting better. Um, I wouldn't say that I'm glad about my decision yet, like, at all. Um, I don't think you're very well prepared for all the emotional roller coaster that you're going to partake in as well. I know I wasn't, like, I knew, okay, it's going to be painful, okay, I'm getting limited in my mobility, okay, like, help with everything for a little bit, that sort of thing, but, um, no one really tells you that you're going to go through phases, and I hope 
these are normal phases. So, like, this first week, um, it's, I, the only way I can explain it is that we've all had someone pass away or something unfortunate happen to someone and you just, you're just in shock about it. Like, you can't believe it. Like, you know in your brain that that happened, that it's real, you know, that you need to come to terms with something, but you're just, you just, it's so unbelievable. And, like, you're just in disbelief. It's just a very surreal, weird feeling. And that's how it's been. It's like, did I really do this? Yeah, the physical manifestations are there. So, like, your brain is trying to figure out what have we done? Like, what in the world is going on? You know, and I really hadn't thought about, which I guess I should have, but, you know, it, it makes sense to me being a PT, right? I mean, I'm having a whole new, you know, you have a homunculus in your brain, right? That is a representation of your body parts. And so that map right now of that area in my brain is like laying down new pathways and neuroplastic changes are happening as well as in the periphery um, out in my, in my um, trunk. So yeah, it's having to refigure out, right? Because I'm going to have to, re my body's going to have to refigure out balance points. You know, my center of mass is changing. My, I would say like the most counter counter um, acting I've had to do has been on my neck, right? So, and I'll be going through all that in the book, but um, my neck and my shoulders. So, um, there's definitely a lot of other aches and pains too that go along. But um, I'm just kind of in that in-between, like, phase of reality or not. And, like, it's definitely real. Like, I did this. And then you're also in that panic mode of, oh, crap, what have I done? Like, what have I done? And then you're going, like, you're just like, you know, was this the right decision? Is this really what you wanted? I don't know. I have no idea right now. I have no idea. Um, so I'm just hoping all that will pass. You know, I know I'm kind of through the thick of it, um, but it's still to be determined um, whether or not this was the right decision, really. So, yeah. Um, kind of stuck with them at this point. So, hopefully everything will change. Um, but yeah, just lots of ups and downs. I've probably, I'm not really, I'm not a crier and I've probably cried three times now. The first one was before you go to have your surgery, like when you're actually in the room putting your clothes in the little bag with your name on it, um, and it's so real that, like, it's happening, like, it's going down, like, it's about to go down, like, this is go time, um, I just started bawling, and, I mean, you want to run away, but at the same time, you're trying to tell yourself, no, remember, this is what you want, um, it was just really weird. It was just really weird. The anesthesiologist really helped me out in that area um, to just talk with me and talk about other things. And um, he was very reassuring and consoling. The nurses, like, I understand they have to do their job, right? They can't give somebody too much time to debate this or rethink this or whatever because, like, they're trying to prepare you for surgery. So they just kind of ignore you. So um, I understand where they're coming from. I would have liked for them to just like slow down a little bit, but um, I don't know, you know, I think it's one of those things like you're never gonna be ready. You know, it's like, I don't know, jumping out of an airplane, I would say, like jumping off a cliff, like, no not ready. It's not ready, set, go. It's ready, set, no. So, um, but I will 
will say that I was worried about the anesthesia part of it. Like I knew, okay, Autumn, like you're strong. Like you can get through the pain. You know what to do for the immobility. Like you'll be fine. But I was fearful of the anesthesia part going to sleep. So that was actually the best part. And um, right before surgery, one of my friends said that. She was like, that's what you're worried about? She was like, honestly, she's just like, it's the best sleep of your life. Just tell yourself, like, you're going there to get the best sleep of your life. And it was. It was crazy. So, um, I wouldn't be worried about that in the future with things. Um, because it was, all that was perfect. All that was fine. Um, yeah. So, I would say not to worry about that. say that um, I was eager to take my narcotics just because I've never taken anything in my life. So I'm like, hmm, what are, what's this going to do? What's this all about? What's all the, you know, talk about? And those things I have was prescribed Percocet, which is Oxy and Tylenol. And it was, it did nothing. I think I was even more wired. I did it mainly to just get some sleep, you know, because you're so uncomfortable. You can't get comfortable. And uh, I was just like, well, let me try to just knock myself out. And it did not work. So, yeah, don't bank on those, okay? Um, I would also say probably one mistake I've made was I also didn't want to, like, take a lot of Tylenol. to my body and not overdo it and not underdo it, right? Because I don't want to get 
frozen shoulder here, but I also don't want to like bust the seams open. So it's balancing that. And yeah, so I'm recording this as I'm going to my first follow up. Mainly the main thing I want him to do, it's really hard for me to see is my scar. Like one of my scars is healing up really nicely and one is not in my opinion so we'll see what his opinion is it's just real swollen um, and bumpy and lumpy and um, still has some bleeding to it it's darker I can't tell if it's like scabbing or if it's just still has blood there or bruising or if it's actually I even texted the doctor and I said, is this going necrotic? Because um, that can be a real thing, you know. Another thing is, you know, he, he thinks I'm, you know, being just overly stressed. And I'm not, but I just know a lot and I've seen a lot. So, you know, it makes me question a lot and I have nothing to compare it to. Like, my, own, my comparison is my other side, right? So, uh, that's all I know. But... I've heard over and over again that you really have to treat like your right and your left as just separate surgeries because they're going to do both different things at different times and the end result should be what you want um, but they're going to go at their own rate. That's what I hear. So anyways. Do thank my doctor for giving me his cell phone so that I can, you know, text him as things come up. Um, and he's been very awesome for for me to go to and get a definite answer on, and then just lay it at rest. So that's what I've done, and I'm just continuing to trust in him. He's seen it a lot. He's seen everything that could happen, should happen, would happen, and so, yeah, we'll see what he says and take his advice. Alright, everyone have a great rest of your week.